Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Today I got a map for you, a new map actually. It's called Selkie Isle. I don't know who made it, but it does look pretty cool and fairly well balanced. So we're just going to see how it plays out. Maybe you want to try it for yourself after the cast and just see how it goes. Um, I do have to apologize. No mini map and no flashbacks on this one because I am in a tremendous time crunch as I'm getting ready to leave and get married. So this cast and the one other one that I need to do um, are just going to be basic stuff, no minimap to rely on. I will get back to doing that when I come back from the honeymoon, which will be roughly a week from when you're watching this, I think, if I have my schedule laid out correctly. Okay, so, on the northern side, we have a whole bunch of Aeon. Corwin is going to go Cybern, and Freshy UEF, but we've got two Aeon on this side, Maverick and... Battlefront, both taking that faction. And then on the southern side, we have HCH as Cybern, um, Buddy Buddy as Seraphim, and then we've got UEF for Greenio and Seraphim for Psychic. So this whole side over here is going to be Aeon um, moving southward, and most everybody else is a good mix. This is going to be a well balanced game. 1400 to uh, 1300 to 1600 rank range with just about exactly even placement around the map all right i'm actually going to bump up the speed on this one because this is a rather expansive map and i want to knock this out as quickly as i can um corwin looks like he's going to go for some standard expansion on his mass extractors navy fairly early ah reclaim there's a frigate frigates are worth a substantial amount of mass actually and some more frigates out in the middle we've got some rocks just take a peek around and it is symmetrical as far as reclaim is concerned. There's the same frigates. And more frigates. Looks like every beach has some frigates. You get a frigate. And you get a frigate. Everyone gets a frigate. And a nice little beach access over to the side. It's like a boat ramp. Off into the ocean. Julio, some prime real estate right there. House on the cliffs with a boat ramp onto a sandy beach. Can't get any better than that. So... It looks like we're going to have a lot of early Navy in play, um, which is a good thing. Get frigates out, hopefully pull Navy Denial on the other team. And we've got two ACUs out. That's going to be Freshy and Greenio going for the island. There is a place for land units in this. This looks like a fairly air-intensive map. And, of course, Navy is going to play a tremendously gargantuan role because all of these bases are packed up towards the front enough that Navy is pretty much going to be able to wipe out everything unless they can get a... Uh, um, what do you call it? A Bastille, a fortress, a retreat, a castle on the mountain up here on this side that's going to be out of the reach of most naval units. That's actually an awesome overlook. This is a really cool map. I just randomly picked up this map, um, a replay out of the vault, um, and I did not expect one to be this well made. Typically when people make maps, um, they go for the big idea of the map and they don't really put as much thought into the little fine details and intricacies, you know, the little elevation changes that you see all over the place. But whoever made this did a phenomenal job. This is, this is a beautiful map. I can honestly say that it looks fantastic. Okay. Enough ooing and eyeing over the map creation. We've got drops going on. Got engineers pushing across, throwing down as many land factories as they can in order to start a land push this here direction. We've got engineers flying around the back. Those are going to drop on the aforementioned cliff. And that is going to let them build things, hopefully unnoticed, on the top end. Then we've got drops going over here to grab these mass extractors. I would drop engineers here to steal the reclaim. That would be a huge help. Looks like the team is fighting over the mass extractors there. And then we do have engineers on this side, so not an easy access point to get across. But there was a handy-dandy Aurora and Scout pair that was able to get over here. It's going to get bombed out, but not before it kills off a mass extractor and does a little bit of harassment on that side. So well done, Battlefront, for getting that over there. And a drop on this side. Lucky placement of the point defense. That is a very nice area to catch pretty much anything that gets dropped here. There's an attempted arty drop, but it is not going to go anywhere. 
HCH has got Navy going down. There's already a T1 sub on the way south. I love the T1 bomber play. Always love aggressive play like that. Interceptor's coming in to remove the threat. And we're starting to see some land spam over here. Only one engineer building land factories, which is kind of an odd choice. If I were them, I would be building with more than one so that I could get as much spam up as quickly as I possibly could in order to overrun this entire edge. But I suppose to each his own. Also, observation, the core mass extractor configuration allows for double adjacency on four factories, which is awesome. Get some of those El Cheapo T3 units building. I think somebody figured up, if you have triple adjacency on a factory and you build nothing but Percivals and you immediately control K and reclaim the Percivals, you basically get free mass. Um, because the mass value of the of the unit is higher than the build cost once you factor in that much adjacency. It's not really worth it for the micro, like it's not an effective means of generating infinite economy, but it does work. At least on a small scale. All right, Napalm's gonna take out one expansioneer over there. And that's gonna be the end of that. Yellow, Corwin. I really like the idea, but I think there was not quite enough effort put into this build at the beginning. Um, he should have had a lot more engineers building land factories there because HCH has been given a chance to respond and he's collecting his own group of Mantis, which is actually going to wipe out the front line there. It is of equal gr or greater numbers than anything that's being pumped out by the factories. And now we have the problem of instead of groups of units clashing, we have a stream of units from the factory clashing with a group of units from HCH. And that's going to be a win for HCH any day of the week. Because streaming units are not as strong as clump units. T1 Bomber Squadron coming in. Where is it going to be aimed? Yes, power. The oh-so-crucial resource going to wipe out all those P-Gens. That's actually going to damage his ability to build air. He's got T2 Navy up, but not nearly enough power to really accomplish what he needs to do. More engineers going down. Air defense online, though. That's going to shoot down a couple of bombers. Over the next two passes or so, that's going to kill all of them. So... There goes the bomb trying to get it landed on the air defense, but that's not going to work out, and that's going to be the end of that. Good job, Maverick, pushing all that T1 air out and those bombers and everything else he's doing aggression-wise. Excellent play to get a piece of the island over here. But it does look like Greenio has done a fantastic job of getting a task force put together. He's got a lot of Lobos. He's got some uh, Riptides coming out, which is going to give him access to either the water or the land, depending on where the threat is coming from. Unless there's a point defense. Then the point defense is going to push him back. So we got a Mantis in the base here. An Annoyance, nothing more. Not going to do any serious damage. And a couple of Mantis right there. T2 gunships moving up towards the north. There is a Zilch Zero Nada AA mixed in with the mobile forces and there is a single lonely anti-air turret right there so the gunships are going to be a useful tool for harassing um, if these units choose to push out and i'm actually impressed that yellow was able to get that many units online earlier when we looked he was kind of streaming but he must have gotten a clump worked up and now he's sitting in front of six air factories only his anti-air is going to go down that's a problem interceptors coming in Gonna kill off one gunship and break for the second. I think that's gonna be a successful kill. Nope, he is going to go for the micro versus air. Building anti-air out of the factory instead to try to kill that gunship. I do like the T2 Navy push. I'm not sure how on earth Psychic isn't at the uh isn't even worse off as far as that power stall was going earlier. He is back online. He's being supported by his teammates is the main reason that he isn't at a total loss right now. And those two destroyers will actually come in handy. Gunship is going to go down in just a moment here. Nope, it's still half health. I thought it was a little worse off than that. 
There's three gunships over here now. We've got another player jumping into the air game. Maverick being the supportive team player. I like seeing that. I love it when players actively engage with the map. Um, they don't just sit in their corner and expect everyone else to win their slots. They actively go out and participate in the other areas of the map in order to influence the overall game. Nine times out of ten, a team that is accomplishing that will win over a team of equal or even slightly better players who are all working individually. Greenio building T1 bombers for himself. Still pushing out those units here. He definitely has his foothold firmly established. I don't think he's going to get pushed off the island, but he's definitely not making a whole lot of progress. I like how Freshy is the same color as the civilians. It blends right in. There's a civilian commander. Bet you didn't know they had those. Basically a hostile AI player that hunts you to the death if you dare to step foot in his base. Would that not be great in the normal game? You can make it like a cyber maser comp. Hidden somewhere deep in the depths of the map on like a 40k map. You could just hide a fully upgraded commander controlled by the civilians. Anybody who stepped there would die immediately. It would be hysterical. Warwin now has T2 of his very own. He's already got a destroyer and a cruiser out. Gonna get the mermaid to accompany it. Got stealth, got AA, got brutal damage. Check, check, and check. That is a good, solid naval force. <clears throat> Although the mermaid is headed in the wrong direction from everything else. It's going to get picked off by these units here without really accomplishing anything. There's the turn, and it's headed back across to these other units. Good to see, good to see. The hover units are real. Battlefront pushing Psychic back with a destroyer and some hover. Um, hover is overly effective versus Aeon destroyers, but versus Seraphim, Seraphim actually does a really good job versus the hover units. He is going to take the time to try and kill this destroyer, which I think is probably the right choice. The hover tanks are going to zap that ship. Another one's going to move in. That constant, almost 100% accurate damage, even though the Seraphim destroyer may not have the highest actual damage statistic, it has one of the highest effective damages. Um, because it just doesn't miss that much, if at all. A lot of games it will play the entire time without missing anything. The only time it does miss is sometimes there is an exact trajectory across the side of the ship where the beam will fire in front of the unit and not actually connect with it. That's fairly rare. It is Cybern on Cybern violence with a little bit of UEF mixed in. Only one cruiser and one destroyer left over here. I don't know why he's running. He's got two cruisers and two destroyers along with a frigate. Can very easily overwhelm this poor production area. Kind of feel bad for it. It's always a shame to lose your naval production and hard to come back from to boot. So as far as this map design goes, on this player... Um, there is no easy water access, so I would kind of call this the air slot. Everybody else has easy access to the beach, uh, although air can get down here and get into the water through that avenue. It looks like everyone else is pretty much settled on this as common knowledge as well, because um, Buddy Buddy is also going exclusively air without any naval representation. And that was the death. That's Corwin. Yellow is out of the game. I miss an ACU explosion. Woohoo! As soon as I say that I'm not doing the unit... <laughs> as soon as I say I'm not doing the flashback, there it is. That was a kill due to torpedo damage, it looks like. Just accumulated damage. The AC was in the water trying to defend the... Um, trying to defend the build power there. May or may not have had the torp upgrade. One way or the other, he was in the water and taking far too much damage from those navies. And now he's dead. So, one down on the northern team. 
that is going to, yeah, no share game. So that's going to put a major dent in the combat capabilities of the northern side. They are doing a better job of holding this island, even making some progress. You can see down here we've got strikers and artillery circling around the back side. Uh, they are going to do a fair bit of damage to Purple's base. Huh. HCH knowing the map quite well, so it's a little unfair. Yes, knowing the map does give you a bit of an advantage, although it's not a tremendously good excuse. There is definitely something to be said for playing on the map before and not playing on the map before. But really, once you get up in like the 1400, 1500 range, you should be able to adapt to circumstances pretty readily and that not be as huge of an issue. So we've got Psychic dropping, uh, Buddy Buddy dropping. <clears throat> that is going to be Artillery from Buddy and a whole bunch of tanks from Psychic. And that one's going to get shot down. That is a crying shame. Could have ended things there. Most of the reason that I chose this game was for the map, because I love seeing new maps to be played. Everybody sends me Wonder Games, everybody sends me Gap of Rohan Games. Literally, you would not believe the amount of Gap of Rohan Games that I get. I do watch them, um, like I watch all the other replays, but Gaps, they all kind of follow the same pattern. Not kind of. They all follow the same pattern. And... There was a period a couple of weeks ago where I had, I think, four days back to back, had at minimum two gap games submitted per day. Um, I probably got seven or eight gaps back to back to back to back. So people who keep sending those in and then wondering why I never cast your replays, that would be why. Because <laughs> gap games are typically not very conducive to casting, and I get a lot of them. You should explore. Play maps. Play new maps, play games in places that you normally don't, and you have a much higher chance of not only having an awesome game, because you know, you'll know you have new experiences and new things to try and new scenery, but you'll also have a much higher chance of getting casted, because <laughs> we all like a variety of maps to look at, not necessarily the same one all the time. That goes for sentence too. Zooey Fire gonna drop that engineer. And that is that. Artillery on the ground. Too close to fire on that T2 mass extractor, sadly. And there it is. Apparently, artillery does not friendly fire itself. Well, that is a handy, handy thing to know. There is some units, there are some units, that do damage themselves as far as friendly fire goes. Or damage their, your other units. Namely, the Fat Boy, um, anything with huge AoE like that, artillery, stuff like that. Um, it is interesting to note that T1 artillery does not friendly fire. That is extremely handy. Saves you from wiping out your own army on a continual basis. There's T2 air that is about to be wiped out along with all that build power by those artillery. And HCH is going to move north with some scouts, kind of see what he can expect try to maybe push that Navy out of the water. We finally got Navy 1 over on the right hand side as well. Psychic finishing off those last few hover tanks right there. And he is going to be able to start bombarding the base or dropping things or moving his ACU across or something to end the game because he does not have a naval opponent any longer. Strat Bomber circling the map right up there. Buddy Buddy was able to push T3 air out relatively quickly. We do have a few ASF, but it's going to kill off a few mass extractors before it dies. So that strap bomber was worth it. Nice production down here, by the way. Buddy Buddy does have um, resource allocation and some PGENs, so he is doing fine on power. Well ecoed, my friend. Well ecoed. And my mouse scroll wheel is starting to act up again. I do need to do a reinstallation of FA, I think. Having some issues with that recently. Some hover tanks coming out on the bottom edge. That is going to try to do a little bit of damage. But on the northern side here, Frigate's just going to eat these factories alive. Nothing really to be done about it. There's so much damage and HP in those frigates. Um, as far as a mass for mass comparison goes, once they are in your production, there's really no chance of getting it back online again. All of your build power is just going to die. And I think we're just going to watch the slow, inevitable fold 
of the Northern team. So, as far as what's been going on with me, um, I have been consolidating my apartment, basically. <laughs> um, getting ready for another person to live here. Have not had a... I've had a roommate before, but of course not a female living in the house with me. There's a lot of cleaning involved, converting it from a bachelor pad to a home or two, so to speak. Um, it's kind of an interesting experience. Lots of stuff going in the dumpster, lots of stuff going to Goodwill and being sold on Craigslist, and just time-consuming stuff, shifting things, moving things. Um, I kind of feel bad. There's a couple of slightly subpar replays uh, that I've posted as far as the ones that have been in this uh, in this group while I'm gone. But between being pressed for time and also not having a whole lot of replays to draw from, this was the best that I could do. Typically, over the course of a week, I'll get at least two good games submitted. I do like the answering strap bombers down here. Battlefront pulled T3 Air in a mighty fashion and has been pushing strap bombers across. There are plenty of ASF on the southern side, though, to defend from those. And that's not going to be enough. It did hurt some, but it's not going to be enough to flip the tide of this game. I do like how Freshy is uh, maintaining his Navy spam enough that even though Galaxy Class is in the water um, for HZH, he has been holding them back for quite some time with this hover. Um, I would encourage people to try to send in replays. Um, watch them before you send them to me. I've had several people send me replays recently where it's just a complete and total steamroll. And while it's fun in the moment to play that kind of game, it's very boring to watch. Because when you kill two people in the first five minutes of the game, it's very easy to see where the map is, where the game is going to go. Even if it took you, you know, 30 minutes to kill the other two, once you lose two players in a no share game, that's pretty much GG uh, at, at that point. And just things like that. Try different maps. Try um, try to rewatch the replay before you send it to me just to make sure you weren't a, oh, in the heat of the moment, this is fantastic, or I'm in the groove, and then you rewatch it, and then you're like, oh, yeah, there was a lot of turtle in that game. <laughs> it just uh, helps make my life a little bit easier as far as uh, watching all of these replays and trying to sort through the new fine material to cast. Oh, a nuke. What? I miss that. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's for purple. Uh, there's the scroll wheel. My, uh, occasionally the scroll wheel is locking. Like, the scroll, it will not scroll at, in or out unless I let it sit for a minute. Something is hanging in the interface, and I've never experienced that problem before. So that's why I'm thinking I probably need to reinstall FA before I start playing again when I come back. Anyway... I do greatly, greatly appreciate everything that you guys have done as far as kind words, uh, good things that you've said to me and about the channel, encouragement that you've offered. It's definitely improved since it first launched. I tried to watch some of my first videos that I put out um, a, a, just a little while back, and it was cringeworthy. It really was. Um, <laughs> it was bad. It was bad, bad. Uh, just seeing all of the mistakes that I was making and, you know, uh, misphrasings and inaccurate information and all this other stuff. I just appreciate everybody that stuck with me through that and up into this. I know this was not the best cast and this week has not been the best representation. I do apologize for that, but I will be back on track once I return with my new wife. And uh, she is actually on board with doing a dual cast every once in a while. She does play a little bit of Spring Commander. Um, she has a few times. She's still learning, not really in tune with the RTS genre so far. Um, she just hasn't had a whole lot of opportunity to play this kind of game. But I am getting her into it, slowly but surely. And uh, she is more than willing to step on for a little bit and do some commentary with me or some back and forth and we'll probably see us playing games at some point she plays uh, hearthstone and a couple of other things that we can probably spar back and forth with so you'll see a bit of her once we get back and uh, i will be back on top of things with a little bit of extra free time so that i can get everything back up to like i normally do it and i'm ready and psyched to start a new chapter in my life and you know i'm more than happy to share it with you guys 
as far as keeping you up to date on details, letting you in on what's going on, and all of that other good stuff. Cannot wait to get married. <laughs> as of this cast being broadcast, I am probably already... I've already tied the knot, but I can tell you I am psyched right now. I am ready for it to happen. And uh, I, I'm I'm ready to just settle down and get started just building a home. I know that sounds old and quaint, but um, being a bachelor is no fun. Kind of lonely. And I'm, I'm ready to have somebody else here in the house with me, if nothing else. All right. I think I'm about done rambling here. I see Strap Bomber zipping in on an ACU. That is going to wrap up this game. A little bit of a slow one. But hopefully you got a good impression of how to play this map. If you ever get a bad replay, always just look at it as a learning experience. You can see how the map is laid out, what strategies work, what strategies don't, and what you need to change. I liked the uh, land push over across here. Even though it didn't work out exactly as intended, um, I think with a little bit of improvement, a tweak here and there, that could be very, very strong. How to secure the center island and just the layout of everything. So hopefully you enjoyed this cast in that manner and maybe me rambling a little bit. If not, oh well, I'll be back with normal content and just don't hold it against me. Come back and watch when I come back. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video.